Zeno, thanks very much for joining me um, to talk about your film with the Waterman's French Impressions group. Um, first of all, can I ask you, what were the origins of the film? Where did the ideas come from? Uh, I was thinking about making a film of about a guy who was actually going out of a uh, juvenile detention center into the world and reflect around how it was difficult for him to get into the world, etc. And then I read this thesis, this book uh, from a, a Belgian criminologist talking about these these places because I, I, I needed to fill the backstory of my character and then I read the book and and the book was just brilliant and and just made me want to um, reverse the thing and not talking about someone who was who was out but someone who was going to be out and and try to keep the fear of what it is to be out and to go out um, uh, in the world but uh, really tell the story of of uh, of what it is to be inside and it was also related to you know, someone in my, in my family who, who were there. And then I was like, okay, now it's, it's a good thing for me to critique also somewhere, uh, a place that is completely invisibilized in our society. How did you research that sort of institution? Did you film in it? So I wrote them an email and I said, I need to be there. Um, and they said, okay, uh, you go. Uh, and I had the luck to be there first, like one month, and I, I had the little flat next to the center, which is very remote. And then I would go there every day and, and make research. And um, and basically everything that you see in the film, uh, according to, you know, the real daily life stuff is basically true and according to what I saw. And I it was really important to me, for me to make like a complex, uh, not black and white approach on these places because it's they're trying their best, uh, the educators, but somehow they have this system in front of them. So I wanted to praise the the actual people who who work there, but I wanted to critique how the system is shaped. Yeah. I think it was quite a humanist approach to the educators because you could see their their, their weaknesses and their strengths. Yeah, we try. You know, when I was there, also it was very recent that they introduced women in the yeah. So it was very new, and I what I what I saw is that the women kind of achieved better uh, goals, like better uh, résultats, better you know. Um, and I wanted to, you know, praise it and, and celebrate the fact that they are heroes and they want to make the life of these kids better. And, you know, and it's just what I saw and what I wanted to talk about. And also because for me, the, the bad guy, uh, in, in some, in somehow a lot of prison movies is often these people like the, the, the authority, Mm. Uh, but but for me, it's more deeper than that, because the bad guy in these juvenile center institutions is actually the fact that we are still putting kids in jail, basically. Um, that's what I wanted to point at and not trying to divert the audience from the actual political point of view that I was trying to make. How did you get the look? And I know you're a cinematographer by training, yeah? So I guess in the writing process, I had, it was al already, I think, visual. And the reason for that is that we were trying to make a love story. And I really wanted that this look was uplifting this feeling about a love story. And that you, I didn't want to lead the audience in a wrong path uh, with the look. And I really wanted to acknowledge in the very beginning, like, it's going to be, cinemascope it's going to be like that and and we wanted movements we wanted you know uh generosity like you say um because also it was a, a political point po political point like love stories between two men are often based around the overcoming of shame or the inhibition that you need to you know work on and and um especially in young, young, uh, young characters. And what I wanted to do is actually give out a really generous love story 
with with feelings that can have no shame. The conflict is more about the system and the institution who who forbid uh, reflecting around also how we still live in a very homophobic society, even though there is so much better changes and. Uh, it's so much better than when I was a, a kid uh, or when a teenager. But uh, the real enemy now is is not within these new generation, these new kids. They already broke their chains. They are free, mm -hmm. uh, but they still live in a in a world that is a bit hostile. And that's what I wanted to kind of reflect um, in the film: is that these kids are free and they love themselves and they and they love who they desire. Uh, um, but the problem is not there. And the problem also is not about these other kids because I really wanted to normalize tolerance and show that it's, you know, it's, it's, it's going there. And, um, this new generation, even on the set, like these, you know, people were straight, people were, were queer and they were, they were just friends. They were first inmates before uh anything else and I, I got a real sense of you know what time. i mean um you you've yeah. got two lead actors of course but the rest of them they see you got to know very quickly you knew their names you knew who they were yeah. that, and mm. were they um, actors or amateurs or who you know they, they all want to be actors but mm. yeah they're young uh, they're like between you know the really young one is like was like 13 14 but the other one was like more 15 to 18 or 21 one of them you know they were in this range um and you know they were they just understood very quickly we took them to an actual center uh before the shooting and they could see for their eyes and and you know one day and talk with the kids and try to understand better and uh, I think it gave them a sense of responsibility and humility to tell the story. It's yeah. a lovely length as well. It's not like three and a half hours. Well done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think the, the best directors can tell stories in less than 90 minutes. But then as a film editor, <laughs> I always thought that. Um, so uh -huh. bet you are. There, I bet you did. Is there something? <laughs> they always want to cut. They always, always. want to cut. I had to fight. I had to fight. And I still think that the movie is a little fast. But anyway. It, it was, no, you it don't? Was just right. Um, okay. So what would you like to say to my audience in West London who are going to be seeing it? What, what do you hope they're going to get from the film? What questions should they be asking? No, first, you know, first, I think it's very nice to have this Francophile uh, screenings and i think it's very nice to attend them and uh, thank you for including me in this program uh you know i think it's both things i think i i want people to feel love and to feel they can be in love and and they can identify to two kids in love and still even though they're not their age or their uh, orientation they can feel what it is to be in love because that's what we try to do is try to touch the universal point of of that and cinema allows you to identify to anyone or anything you can identify to a dog and have and cry yes <laughs> um so yeah we wanted to show that love is love and queer love is love and if you can feel love, then we 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 managed what we wanted, but also we wanted to create empathy for these kids who are locked up. And if you have empathy, then it's, it's we're happy.